I, I said, let's do a, a journalism topic. And you said, oh, let's talk about how the whole profession has passed me by. Has passed me by. That's what you said on the phone. Yes. No, it's true. In fact, I went on yesterday on a, on a, a video with two uh, lovely young college students, two guys, and we talked about it. <laughs> Here's the thing. When I first broke in, I started my first full-time job was at the Chronicle, 1979. I was 34. That was my first full-time job. So Iggy, you beat me to it. Um, I was a print journalist. I was a columnist and a sports columnist. I, I gave opinions. I didn't do reporting. And um, I never, ever interacted with any readers or fans because that wasn't my job. It was not an interactive job. I wrote and I wanted um, to entertain people and get them engaged. Sometimes they wrote me letters. There wasn't even the Internet. Then they wrote right. me letters and I always wrote back, uh, yeah. always wrote back to them. But that's what the job was. I, when people say to me now, um, could you tell me how to uh, how to get a job in journalism? I say, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean to be flip or discouraging or anything like that. What I did in 1979 is old world. Yeah. Now, newspapers are failing. And I'm going to give you uh, some examples, Ziggy. The, uh, where, the Press Democrat, which where I worked for a long time and I loved it. Iggy, they don't even have, hardly have a sports department anymore. No, they don't. And they don't have a regular sports columnist, not someone. Bob Pedecki and I each wrote four times a week. That's right. a lot of work. We wrote four times a week, and we really brought readers in. The Chronicle now has three. It has Bruce Jenkins, Scotty Osser, and Annie Killian. Well, Bruce and Scott are just a little younger than I am. Um, I don't know when they're going to retire. I would never ask them. But when they do, is the Chronicle going to fill those jobs? Yeah, who I knows? Mean, yeah. Heaven knows. I yeah. mean, they may they may not even fill those jobs. When I worked at the Chronicle, our circulation was over 600,000 a day. Now it's about 175. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really gone. It's about a quarter of what it was. And so you saw what I, just happened with the Sacramento Bee sports coverage. They're going, they're going local. Iggy, what happened? The, they're they're doing what the press Democrat decided to do about four or five years ago is focus on uh, local stuff. Focus. So on will they stuff. be covering the Niners anymore? Not daily. Well, that's quite a, a not daily. They're going to cover high school stuff. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So what I tell young people is really in order to succeed now, it's an anachronism to try to get a job at a newspaper, even a place like The Athletic. It's an anachronism. You need to have videos like what yeah. Grant does, where he does some writing on this on SI.com, which is a beautiful site. And it really it's where he started. Yeah. Um, he does do writing that goes along with, with his videos, but Iggy, they've told you, if you do just writing, you get a certain amount of, of looks, views. No, no, but no. If you Here's how it is. If you do just writing, you get a certain amount of ad revenue, uh, whatever the rate is. If you put a video on the top of the article that the rate that you get for ad revenue is 10 times the amount. So every, ad, oh. every article has to have a, a video. I learned there that. There you go. Yeah. So what I'm saying real quick is you need the job to get the press pass. That's really what the job offers right now. But beyond that, it's impossible to get the job and it's not going to pay very well. Right. It's not going to pay very well. So I, I warn people off, young people off, and I don't mean to be a jerk. I, yeah. I, and I say, I think you need to be entrepreneurial, like start like Iggy or Vish and yeah. get yourself your own. Well, Iggy has SI.com, which is a phenomenal site and a great place to work. But in addition, he has YouTube and now he has Twitch and Vish has YouTube and, yep. uh, you know, others have YouTube. And I think that's the way to go. And it's a different kind of skill set. That's the other thing I want to say. For me, I spent thousands of hours in my life trying to be a better writer. What I think, what Iggy, by the way, puts himself down as a writer, Iggy's a hell of a writer. But what's getting him money now is his personality his generosity, the way he brings other people in, and his real deep down knowledge of how football games work. And I'd say I don't know of another football writer except McGlinchey in in uh, McGinn. 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 He's great. I'm he's sorry. So I, I said so good. We got McGlinchey on the brain. 
Yeah. I got McGlinchey. Bob McGinn in, in Green Bay, who really, really knows his stuff. Uh, and I'd say he and Iggy are modern. That they, they, they can bring this sort of knowledge in videos to people. And Iggy even does videos where he shows plays and analyzes yeah. them. And I, I don't think newspapers can keep up, up with that, Iggy. And one more. May I say another thing? Please go. Yeah. Newspapers, you have to pay for them. You have to pay for a subscription. Like we get the Chronicle and the New York Times here. Um, it costs a lot of money. But we do it because I'm an old time newspaper guy, you know? Yes. And other places, if you don't, you want to, if you don't have a subscription and you want to read their articles, there's a paywall. Like the Press Democrat has a soft paywall. You can probably read about 10 articles a month for free. But then after that, you have to get a subscription online. Some, like the Washington Post, I think is a hard paywall. You can't read anything, I don't Nothing. think, there. Yeah. And the Athletic has a hard paywall, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So what they're doing is they're protecting, from my point of view, an outmoded product. I agree. It's it's not what's current. They're protect no. they're protecting a fifty or a hundred year old product. They're trying and to save I the feel, past. I'm sorry. They're trying to save the past. Yes, they're trying to save the past, and I I think ultimately they're going to have a problem with that. I think it's better on SI.com and YouTube where there are ads, just like ads are in newspapers, and where you don't have to pay and you watch. And I think, uh, and especially for younger people, Gen Gen Z. Yes. That's how they're going to want to get their sports news. Watching. And beyond that, which I think is what I've stumbled into, interaction. Yeah. I used to call you used to call yourself. It was you went from being a, a writer, sports writer with, to a, a multimedia journalist. Now it's like an interactive multimedia journalist. It's like kind of like what Marty did for all those years on the on the Giants post game, But it's visual and it's uh, seven days a week. That's the way I think. Tell them what Marty you're talking about. Marty Lurie does has been doing forever, like the uh, kind of a call in show on KMBR for the Giants, and he takes people's calls and makes them feel smart and says, you know, praises them, says good idea, and he does it for hours and hours and hours. It's kind of old school. I pretty much took the same concept and brought it to YouTube and just make the fans feel part of the production. It's a good business model. It's a good business model, and yeah. it's worked for Marty. He started yeah. with the A's, he and did. I don't think the A's saw his value. And the Giants, Larry Bear called him up and said, come over to us. And yeah. uh, uh, and I think Marty was ahead of his time. Yeah. And Iggy is at the forefront of what's happening in his time. So journalism students, I would say I could give you advice, but really the one to talk to is Iggy, not me. And what's funny is you're over the, – the, you call this why journalism has passed you by because you consider yourself a print guy and really print is dying. But I don't see it that way. I think – Journalism has not passed you by. I mean, look at you right now. You're on StreamYard. You're streaming on YouTube. I think you're very much in the age of social media. And I think you've actually transitioned into it better than any other writer I know of who's older than me. Well, that's very nice of you. And Barry Z. Depp said the same thing. Lowell, journalism has not passed you by. I love how you apply critical thinking to a problem. You start by asking a broad question and then ask more specific questions to narrow it down to the core issue. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Barry. I don't think journalism has changed. I think the the venue has changed. And I think you, I, maybe I helped bring you here, but you're a natural. Remember, you did this stuff on TV way before I did stuff on TV. You were on KMEL back in the day. I mean, you're a natural, you're a natural performer too. I just had to show you uh, the way and you're right here. So I don't think it has passed you by. I, I You say I'm too hard on myself with my writing. You're too hard on yourself with your streaming, Dad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more. And then I, and then we have one last topic. Hold on. We have one more question. It's from I am J Rico 85. Lowell couldn't be more right. Started watching at the end of the season 2019. And since then have checked in every day since, because you're funny and intellectual. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You make me proud. That was really nice. <laughs>